use those words. I would say that metamodernism is, per definition, progressive. Um, but it is neither left nor right. I would agree with you that these are like reactionary and therefore, uh, you know, counter to what metamodernism is about. This interview is two of the greatest minds of our generation. Just going at it. I fucking sucked. Let's try it again from the top. Welcome back to the program, everybody. This is The Abstract. A lot is going on. The world is going to shit as usual. Um, but uh, we're not here to talk about that today. Today, I am sharing an interview I did with Emil Fries. It's a fantastic interview, I think, as far as my long form content goes, it might, be, might just be one of my most bearable. So please do entertain it and check it out and support this project and this program because there's so much more work to do. And with that, I wanted to give a little apology for the lateness because this was filmed over six months ago, approximately. I did intend to release it within the week but i didn't get around to it and frankly this project doesn't have enough support to uh keep me actively on top of these little tasks i'm not going to give any commentary you know but uh there's a lot of good stuff i think and it 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 speaks to a deeper conversation that needs to be had and continually refined as part of this ongoing metamodern project that's what it is so please do join us and comment below ask any questions join the patreon so you can participate on a deeper level and and make this kind of stuff happen look here's the deal here's the deal folks if you're lucky you'll get some close-up action okay you'll get some of this you'll get some of this if we bring it in we bring it home okay we go from this to this hi how's it going hey welcome to the close-up part of this section stuff welcome to the news desk look we want to expand we're going to be doing a lot more of this breaking down shit but it's not going to happen without your support it's just not and it's not going to happen without your support okay i'm going to keep telling you until you get it driving into your brain the shit isn't free my time is very expensive my attention is very uh limited in the ticker below i've included all the current patrons as well as all the past patrons people come and go for various reasons some of them I know personally some of them I have no idea who they are. They're just random internet strangers, and that's that's fantastic. But I really want to build a community that can hold together. So please, you know, take a chance on this particular one. It helps keep all the content free for other people as well. And I hope to uh, see and meet you soon. Welcome to the show, everybody. We have here today a special guest, half of Hanzi. Some might say his better half. Um, Emil Fries, my uh, friend of five years and colleague in these uh, sort of competitive meta political spaces. Here we go. Emil, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having, having me. We're going to talk about a little bit the relationship between meta modernism and the political left, particularly what that means in North America, but I think there is a global left. I think that concept has salience, you know, the international socialists and whatnot. We, we agree that the left has challenges and, and setbacks and blind spots and all these things, but w what I'm emphatic about is that the political spectrum still matters, that people do end up in various places dep depending on what we measure and that the, and that the right is just completely lost its mind and and is largely not to say that um you know just right-wing voters are 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 you know mega chuds there's i think there's stupid people all over the all over the voting spectrum but that's an, in part a consequence of kind of mass society and the dumbing down of the electorate that is a conscious thing but what, what we see with the political spectrum 
is is a slanting to the right because of neoliberalism, a kind of ratcheting towards austerity and cutting social programs and hypercapitalism. So I advocate for and with contemporary left movements because I see them carrying the principles and the policies of of, of, a, of a meta modern way forward. Yeah. Um, and uh, you have advocated for that metamodernism, per definition, uh, must be a leftist project. Uh, and I wouldn't use those words. I would say that metamodernism is, per definition, progressive. Um, but it is neither left nor right. Um, to me, like left and right is the difference between like state and market, right? And uh, there, um, and it's also what you can read in, in the Hansi book, my political project is, you know, a Scandinavian center left project. Uh, you just need to sit me down with a bunch of uh, average lefties out there. And I'm cured of any notion about like being on the same train as them. Yeah. Um, with them, uh, it is that often lefties are more progressive than right-leaning people yeah so we often kind of like we flatten this and say there's only one axis namely left and right uh, when in fact there are two uh, and you will often come across like in the meta modern form you will come around libertarians yeah which are like very right-leaning you know very market oriented um, who are more progressive um, than scandinavian social democrats yeah so i think it's very important that we make that distinct distinction between being progressive, you know, or reactionary, uh, conservative, or left or right, and that the, the whole left-right axis is about market uh, versus uh, m market versus state. Yeah, that, I, I agree with all of that, which is why I largely support the project and love your guys' articulations of, of that sort of thing, and like, and the treatment of 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 terms like socialism and and capitalism, communism. So you know more egalitarian than socialism, more prudent than conservatism, that, that you and myself as well, we're trying to build a politics and advocate a way through that accomplishes the goals of progressives, right? Those are the necessary baselines, um, but, but sort of does so by tra transcending the, the impasses and the bottlenecks of contemporary politics that does boil down to a, a tug of war a lot of the time. And with your respect to your comment about hanging out with lefties, like there's so many types of leftists. If we're talking about like what are called tankies, you know, I could agree with you because they're sort of hardline communists. They they don't they just want to recruit you. They don't really want to kind of learn or negotiate around these concepts. And lots of there's always been lots of left factionalism right because there's so much diversity there's so much theory to draw from that people can you know express their own lane and preference and, and but this is why like I'm, I'm advocating for a convergence and and like like you said like uh about how i'm defining metamodernism like it's leftist in its roots um but that doesn't that doesn't mean um, that we need to continue to you use these terms and, uh, and identify with that branding like metamodernism is leftist. I'll say that as a kind of shorthand, but it definitely depends who I'm talking to, you know, who's listening, who can handle that, that, that type of discourse, like who's ready to talk about socialism. When you look at the internet discourse, centrists, liberals, conservatives, reactionaries all different mind you but all kind of overlap in important ways uh all drawn to the kind of intellectual dark web type discourse and type punditry and that's just anti-meta modern it's it's reactive it gets in the way of our of our broadening of the horizon uh of our pushing forward this progressive edge so um you know from the beginning i've just been trying to to seek that clarity and to demonstrate like at least in its roots right i'm a i'm a leftist in my roots in in, in my sociological training R vermeulen and vandenacker identify as leftists at least in the past and that that's what you know 
informs their program. And and Hansi with the Scandinavian kind of program is is naturally center left vis a vis the rest of the world, right? So well, it's not like you like eighty percent of Europeans would be considered leftists mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm, US. Exactly. Like if you exactly. just like take the leader of the Conservative Party uh, in Denmark, like obviously he's in favor of like free college uh, tuition, you know, universal health care, because that's a system that we have had for 50 years and it's working pretty good. Yeah. And then by the way, he's gay and he's married to a black guy. You know, that's like our conservative leader in, uh, in, mm -hmm. in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Of course, like from an American point of view, you would say that uh, like we all left this, but then kind of like the, 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 the concept just collapses in on itself and, 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 and loses and loses all meaning. Uh, I will never say that I'm a leftist because there's something when you're sitting down with leftists, they only acknowledge not half the truth, only that state solutions. Like if, if you sit down on a meeting uh, uh, with like a socialist party, it doesn't matter what country, like you'll never hear anyone start talking about, hey, what about entrepreneurship, you know, and how should we like make business? How should we, you know, it's always about how can the state, you know, take funds, you know, and 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 uh, uh, and, 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 and spend it on welfare. Uh, and then, you know, if, you know, I would say if, if you look at, you know, everyone left of the social Democrats uh, in parties uh, around Europe, like they would all. Uh, without exception, take huge loans yeah, that they wouldn't and spend it on welfare and there would be huge deficits. And then within a couple of years, you know, there would be a crisis and then you would be like Greece with no exceptions. Yeah. And that's also with our, uh, with our project, Metamodernism, we have written about like going beyond left and right to acknowledge both perspectives. Uh, and actually I find it like much more valuable to sit down with meta modern libertarians, yeah, um, they may not have like the, the entire truth, but they can have some very interesting uh, and very important insights uh, when it comes to market-based solutions. Because we need market-based solutions. The, the, the secret behind the success of the Scandinavian countries is not only um, that we have universal uh, welfare states; it's also that we have incredible competitive market economies. People often look, look, uh, don't realize that because they just see the thing that you don't have at home. But like Scandinavian economy is very, very competitive. Um, it's also how the whole system is filled up with the union, you know, because we don't have minimum wages. Yeah? Okay. We just have a very strong labor union. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, you can very easily get fired. You know? I think it's very important as a business owner that you can easily get rid of people. Um, then of course we have a welfare system uh, to 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 help people, you know, when they when they get fired. Um, so like if you compare like the Scandinavian welfare system uh, with that of France, uh, you will see that the Scandinavia Scandinavia is much more libertarian, yeah, um, and much more efficient than it is in France. And in France, you also pay around like fifty percent of taxes. Uh, mm -mm. So people often forget that it that it's both and it's both left and right. And uh, Scandinavia is a good exam example of green social liberalism. Uh, the only sensible thing you can be, that's the only thing you make me say, uh, so what's your political thing? Okay, I I'm a green social liberal. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the only thing mm -hmm. that, um, that makes sense. You know, it's the only sensible thing you can be, in my opinion. Yeah, it's about having that balance between market and state and, and not getting confused and, and conflating the degree to which one already has excessive power over the other. Like we do live in a hyper capitalist world, um, especially in, in, in all over the world. But in North America, you know, there's this anti-socialist ethos. It, it disaffects education and, and various types of freedom and stuff like this. And, and the risk in trying to go beyond left and right or, or, or flatten them or whatever is that, um, well, the risk is to flatten them such that, um, people will just take whatever their notion is of the contemporary right. And that's that, or the left. And that's dangerous too, especially because the right. Scandinavia is mm -hmm. no less hyper capitalistic than the U S we just have institutions to pick up the pieces. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, Scandinavian countries are not socialist. Yeah. It used to be kind of that, you know, back in like the 80s and 70s, where uh, many companies like were, were actually owned by the state, you know. Yeah, um, they're, they're mixed economies. Like socialism, socialism is about seizing the means of production. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that is not what we have in Scandinavia. And it is something that we have tried before and it doesn't work very well. Yeah, it's... Um... I, I, I'm, I've always been clear. I've never been fond of, of those terms, like the means of production uh, and, and particularly like just the abstractions of workers seizing them because that means very different things in different industries and in different, at different scales, you know, um, and, and in many ways, you know, workers should not want to just take the reins of a of a big corporation or something but you know, but there needs to be much much, like much more because where are those workers you know like back mm -hmm. in the days you know, had a lot of guys uh you know in, in 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 blue suits with oil stains on them you know going to build big ships and and, and whatnot uh but like in a in, in a modern service uh, economy like the canadian or the danish you know okay so like should like the lawyers and the marketing people like seize the production mm. of, of like mm. their office. Or their mm. It's just like it, these things don't really make so much sense anymore. And I think mm. that we've proven that, you know, the truth is somewhere in the middle between market and state, like a mixed economy. Um, and also where you actually have hyper capitalism, you know, that you have a very, 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 it's not like a compromise. You have a very, very efficient, market economy you know that is brutal you know where people are, are just you know you can get by this all about efficiency and then you know you have some welfare institutions to make sure that um, um uh, that, that you don't get sick or when you get sick you get treatment you get education you know you're taken care of when you got unemployed you know that system has proven itself uh, to be uh, very very efficient and creating the good society um, so, so the next topic I, I would like to talk to you about is namely uh, the thing we often consider like right leaning, namely the new reactionaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I think this is like a thing that has been bugging you for a while. Uh, we also had at some point had an issue with, with meta Nazis, mm -hmm. uh, basically just Nazis uh, who like like meta modern aesthetics, you know, who like that meta modernism is cool. And of course, you know, mm -hmm. they like stage models. And if you're a real Nazis, you want to be on top of a, of, of a hierarchy. I mm -hmm. think that that is not so much an issue anymore. Like we have kind of like cleaned, cleaned the worst of these incidents out. Uh, then there's like the issue of new reactionaries. And um, where we are right now is not that, oh, we've had postmodernism and now we're going to, to metamodernism. No, we, we're having an intermezzo. It's kind of like the, the zeitgeist. And that is this like big anti pomo wave. And it started, you know, a few years back, you know, with the old right, uh, Trump, Peterson. And the beginning we say, oh, but Peterson, he's just this, you know, old, like normal conservative. Mm -hmm. He's a professor. He, mm -hmm. Yeah. But basically, it's just all about being anti-POMO. Uh, and, and that's like a dialectic necessity that like for 30 years, people have, uh, uh, people are now fed up with like 30 years of political correctness and multiculturalism and uh, feminism and, uh, and whatnot and hearing about queer stuff all the time. Like the big majority of people are just like white, boring, heterosexual people who kind of like, okay, now we don't want to listen more to that. Um, so what we're going to see now is for the next at least 10 years or so, this like anti-POMO wave. And a lot of people are drawn to metamodernism because metamodernism has all the arguments against postmodernism. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously you get it drawn to that. Uh, and then also, you know, there's like stage theories, hierarchies, people love to dupe themselves into believing that they're like at, 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 the, high, at, at the highest stage. Um, and then there's also about, you know, gazing inwards, inner perspective. Um, and the, in a way, like we have all these like new reactions, re reactionaries out there, but they're still talking about inner development. Um, and uh, to be honest, 
uh, I would much rather sit down and talk with new reactionaries talking about inner development and how we could implement uh, further uh, uh, psychological development and healing in society than to sit down and talk to normal lefties, you know, who are, you know, material reductionists, you know, is we will just still talk about money and how can we get more welfare and how can we uh, tax the rich and so on, important things. But um, this is kind of like what people have in common. And, and, and the, the project that me and Daniel ha have started, you know, is like a center left uh, project. Um, but it's much like in the first book is almost just about psychological development. And it attracts people from the entire spectrum, yeah? left and right. And uh, for some reason, um, people are more interested, despite being leftist, centrist, uh, 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 right-leaning, people are more interested you know, in coming together uh, and talking about psychological development than being out there in their respective camps, you know, talking about yeah, uh, normal materialist stuff. Um, so uh, the thing you're also addressing that, oh, okay, how do we turn metamodernism into this political movement? It's like at the moment, we just have this platform where people gravitating towards metamodernism can speak to each other. And actually, look, I'm also thinking that, okay, obviously, like the metamodern political project, uh, it's going to be what I think it is, namely this uh, center left project, or like to you, you would may maybe call it like a leftist project, because we, we seem to be pretty aligned uh, politi politically there. But uh, actually, uh, um, just like all the other uh, uh, meta means when they emerge, you know, people are going to be right leaning, left leaning in the center, whatnot. And in there, they are going to emerge different political movements. There's not going to be one metamodern political movement. Because, um, like, if you if if we if we look at the crowd out there, like, it's it's kind of like fifty fifty, uh, um, like, or like, um, yeah, uh, or thir uh, 30, 30, 30, you know, with like left leaning, uh, right leaning, and and, and and centrist people. And and I can understand your frustration. I said, hey, I want to yeah. create this. Well, and we can't we can't get anything done. Right. And if the right leaning people are what I would call metamodern conservatives, what I advocate for them to be um, is is uh, is is grounded and, and sane and reasonable and not what the reactionaries represent, which is contrarianism and and more sort of regressions in social policy. Right. Like like what, you know, like like we've had pro Trump people attracted to it. And that's just a non starter. Right. And I use that word a lot too because various sort of paths and they're not to not to cut people off or make them feel alienated or unwelcome but intellectually politically some approaches are non-starters they don't go anywhere and mm. and you know we should have clear <clears throat> sort of targets goals baselines and those those targets should dovetail with existing movements with the un's development goals Right. It should be grounded in those things. That's not to say like you're super materialist about everything, but but you're historicist and you're, you know, <clears throat> just very, very progressive, progressive and looking for functional progressive uh, pockets and movements to to dovetail with, because what, what, what we're up against. Right. In terms of the 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 sort of dysfunction of the global capitalist system. Um, and if not corruption, right? What we're up against is something that institutionally it can violently beats back progressivism, right? So when there's when there's um, far right rallies, the police protect them. When there's legitimate protests, the police assault them, right? In both cases, they're doing something deeply unethical, deeply counter to their to their sort of nor normative mandates. As institutions, when the Supreme Court overturns Roe versus Wade, this is deeply transgressive and re reactionary, um, and anti 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 meta modern, if if not just anti postmodern. So, um, what you know, what what yeah. I what I want to do? I would say. Sorry. 
uh, anti-modern. Mm-hmm. Anti-modern, yeah. Anti-modern. Even. Like, well, what mm-hmm. we're seeing in the US now is obviously a, 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 a regress um, to like uh, post Faustian values. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and it's also all right. We, we get all kinds of freaks, you know. Like uh, we have people who believe, like who who are, like brilliant on so many levels, and then they believe in UFOs. Yeah, that's right. Or, I, I, I like, you know? yeah. Or and like they don't want to. They don't want to talk yeah, to us they, about they that. We also have like guys who, who who are like, okay, you are ninety percent aligned with, and mm-hmm. then they're like, they really like guns and think mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. constitution is right, you know. So we all have these, you know, obviously. Um, uh, like when it comes to these, uh, uh, you know, but also for European, I, I can't believe that in the US you were like talking about whether you should be able to buy uh, assault rifles, civilians should, should buy assault rifles uh, <laughs> and walk around with them. Um, and of course, like the abortion mm-hmm. that was like settled 50 years ago, we haven't talked about that since uh, in mm-hmm. most Western European countries. And uh, obviously, you know, when it comes to healthcare and and, and free college tuition, that okay, these are like just like basic things that, for some reason or other, is still being debated in the U.S. And um, yeah, uh, are they left? I, I would agree with you that these are like reactionary and therefore, uh, you know, counter to what metamodernism is about. And then again, mm-hmm. we can have someone who is metamodern on so many levels who just fucking like guns. Okay, <laughs> what do you mm-hmm. do with that? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, th- this makes me think of st- you, you know your guys' stage theory because through those terms, you know, I I would be ranked and rank myself like more developed than those than those people, and and he, I can even say like we all we all would. Yeah, I can even we say like you know as a kid. I was roped into the to the sensationalism of guns, right? It's it's ubiquitous in in entertainment and arts and pop culture. Uh, and there's, you know, there's a there's a power aspect to it, but but I've overcome all that. Like I've matured and, you know, rejected all of that kind of amateur uh adolescent kind of fantasy. Um but I don't like to use stage theory to think of myself uh, so hierarchically, although what I'm saying dovetails with that, but, um, you know, I, I think, I think anybody can figure it out. Like a gun nut can not be a gun nut, but they need to realize themselves what, you know, what, what the, the factors are that make them that way, what it would take in terms of their own free will, if you will, to choose different interests. We, we actually, we need more hypocrisy. Yeah, we need more hypocrisy. And the good thing about hypocrisy is that you don't sacrifice truth. Think about it. Okay, uh, I am all about veganism. I just know when it comes in, it comes to the environment, uh, when it comes to diseases, um, when it comes to animal welfare, that it's a no mm-hmm. brain. Exactly. Yeah. And it's also already on the postmodern value meme. Um, ethically, we should all be vegans. And still here I am. You know, as a metamodernist, I think I am, um, and I'm still not a vegan because I just like meat and I don't like to be without meat. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm a hypocrite, mm-hmm. uh, and I think mm-hmm. you could do the same with guns. You, That's a, okay. I just mm-hmm. understand that obviously we shouldn't have guns, but yeah, you, you're I making just, an important point. I just love my Uzi, and I would <laughs> want to keep having my Uzi and do. I don't know what you yeah. do with an Uzi. I. So. This is an important point. So. I wouldn't say we need more hypocrisy, but, but when you, when you say when it needs to be heightened, like the contradictions um, need to be on the surface and, and acknowledged. And, and that's the key for me. Like, like I will eat, eat meat occasionally. And every time I do, I think about those factors that you mentioned. I do think veganism is, is morally, ethically and systemically much better. And, and that's those are the sort of targets we should be transitioning towards. Um, but we we live in a very complex, contradictory society, and individuals are all of that. And so we, we need we need we need we definitely need less hypocrisy, like like orders of magnitude less hypocrisy. But but more important so than scaling it down is I mean, just the the transparency. Yeah, because often. Um, people cannot live 
with being a, a hypocrite. It's one of mm-hmm. the worst things mm-hmm. to be. So instead, they start sacrificing truth. They start making stories about why, in fact, because they, they can't live without the meat, uh, why, in fact, you know, uh, it's uh, you, you can defend eat meeting and, and, uh, and, and all these, you, you, you come up with excuses that, you know, are, are hurting the truth. And the same thing with guns. Ah, it's a right and, and so on. Instead of just saying, yeah, the world would be better uh, with no guns and veganism, but hey, I have a, my lifestyle. I know it's wrong, but yeah, <laughs> so I'm a hypocrite. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so at, first, just acknowledging uh, acknowledging the truth, um, and then I believe we should create uh, we should create a culture of forgiveness, because that's also you know we, we are not very kind to each other. Okay, so you're not a vegan, and then people uh, uh, will attack you. Ah, you're a hypocrite, and did you know this and that? And ah, ah you have these uh, you know uh, right leaning on these tendencies, you know. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we want to, you know, look good, so we, we start hiding the truth and uh, uh, try to appear better than than, than we actually are. Um, so, so yes, you know, in uh, uh, in our our so called, I don't know, we should not call it a community, a network. Like we have like mm-hmm. a group of people that uh, are overlapping, you know, mostly online. We're also increasingly starting uh, to meet in real life. And uh, here we have people from the entire political spectrum. And um, the only thing that people, I think, have in common is that, oh, um, uh, you're aware of inner development uh, and you're allergic to game denial. Yeah. And, 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 and um, uh, those things, of course, something that, you know, new reactionists like, oh, the lefties are uh, game deniers, but then you don't make the step to game change either. Yeah. Um, so, so it's like really that I don't see a political movement materializing. What we see is something, something that comes before the politics. It's also what I'm going to write in, 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 in the next Hansi book. Uh, namely that art is always first. What we see is like art, culture, philosophy, uh, and then at the way end, uh, then we have ethics. Uh, just like think about it, like um, how long, like, like, you know, our societies started getting really modern, you know, in, 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 the, in, in the 18th century and they had like the French and American political revolutions and, and industrial revolution. But it took until after uh, the Second World War, for, World War, for people to say, "Hey, you know what? Racism isn't cool." And it was like, "Oh, and I can remember already in the '90s that mm-hmm. it was not okay to be gay." Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and, and and you know that it's okay to be gay. That's not a postmodern uh, 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 ethics. That's modern ethics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so what we're seeing now is that um, a new meter meme uh, is emerging. And it's emerging, you know, in the arts, you know, in philosophy, in thought world, and uh, you know, a culture, you know, like it's gradually starting, but it's still, still very thin. Only much later will a political uh, movement uh, emerge. But in many ways, like, because if you take, I know that you're you're very concerned with um, the situation uh, in, in your neighboring country, the U.S., uh, and you supported Bernie Sanders, and. Um, uh, it's also that the U.S. has some obvious issues when it comes like to healthcare and education, and you know, so just you see that okay, it's a it's, it's a very rich country, and people are like sick and stupid. You know, it's not very like sick and uneducated, like mm, not it made that way and made yeah. poor. And, and, and yeah. these are things that you don't need metamodernism for. Right? If we are mm-hmm. to fix something like you, you can have a Supreme Court just like deciding that now women shouldn't get an abortion. It's just like, we, this is like a systemic failure yeah. of a system that was built like in the 18th century. Yeah. And uh, when you have like voter suppression laws, like um, it's just like, okay, do, do, uh, so, so do, do we need metamodernism in Ukraine? No, <laughs> we need guns, lots of guns. Uh, and uh, when they have, uh, when they have one at some point, you know, they just like need like basic, help to build up their country and uh, you know install rule of law and to beat co- corruption and these kind of things yeah um so like ma- i feel that like many of the things that that you are fighting for doesn't need metamodernism you know? mm-hmm. yeah and in, in in the broad sense of the definition of of that term like uh i think 
part, you know, my piece metamodernism in the left is also trying to show that there's already a large degree of consensus, if you will, like Vermeulen and Vandenacker are approaching it from a culture studies point of view and talking about art uh, a lot. Um, and, and you guys are sort of picking up from that, whether like incidentally or on purpose and saying there's a developmental trajectory and, you know, we're, we're going to get there. And I'm also trying to sort of fill in some of the gaps drawing from other sources like, like black metamodernism to, um, to say, you know, to spread awareness essentially of that, of that discourse and to, uh, to expand, expand the discourse and have it help these movements um, to not be kind of like determinist about it, like, oh, the civil rights movement is going to get there when it's meant to get there, you know, or or women are going to be free when they're meant to be. Um, not that that's what you're saying, but the developmental models kind of constrain that kind of logic in a sense that it can be kind of kind of defeatist. Like if you guys yeah, are saying exactly. during the Bernie Sanders uh, runs, it's going to happen anyway. <laughs> yes, and, 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 no, exactly. no, 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 like, like, like modernity happened because people went out there and they rebelled against the British uh, or mm -hmm. the French crowd mm -hmm. and built steam engines and uh, mm -hmm. did science. Mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. modernism happened. And, and of course, it's the same with metamodernism that it will happen because you go out there and do and do some stuff. Yeah. But, but also like 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 mm -hmm. what you you are addressing here is um in a way what you say that like this we have this wave of of, of uh, anti-pomoism uh, anti-postmodernism and like we have these new reactionaries and what i hear you say is that uh, that's not metamodernism and, um yeah it's not enough just to be against postmodernism it's not it doesn't make you uh, metamodernism it's not enough just to say oh have you thought about inner development and then be very very reactionary about things if we take like jordan peterson like jordan peterson is obviously not metamodernist he just talks about inner development and uh, and i guess he's saying some things that a lot of people needed to hear out there for instance hey have you thought about taking responsibility for your own life no i haven't oh thank you for saying that you know yeah and, uh, <clears throat> And that's also what I feel that we need right now. It's like, okay, uh, we need to, we all need to gaze inwards um, in, in our lives, mm -hmm. in our lives. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that sort of can be like a starting step towards metamodernism, but um, um, it's obviously not enough just to be, you know, uh, what, what, what was he, what was he like calling, uh, uh, screaming about now, like uh, that fat girls aren't pretty and, uh, yeah, uh, that, and was, that was trans people trans people should shut up and mm -hmm. um yeah obviously that's like very very regressive yes and it continues to make headlines unfortunately um but uh but yeah i mean just to your point about the, sort of the complexity like all like to 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 understand metamodernism or to be metamodern entails kind of uh all of these things together um, <clears throat> what, what was I going to say there? Um, like, oh yeah. So like about inner development, you know, yeah. like it, it's not good to fetishize that either. And, and that be your whole life. Like, like on one hand, you know, I respect people who, who, um, have a, have a career and they commit themselves to a certain identity, a certain brand, you know, and they, they're good at that. And they just keep doing that, whether that's like, like a monk or, or an actor or, or, you know, or, or, um, or a socialist activist or whatever it is. Right. Uh, but, and, and same thing when it comes to med, you know, like I said, monk, like, so meditation, it's good for you. It's good for society. <laughs> there shouldn't be any real argument about that, but people who fetishize it and try to push it on others and, 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 and traffic it through this sort of coach mentality, uh, for better or worse, um, like it, it doesn't solve all the problems either, which is why we need that, that balance and need to be able to come in and out of that. And like, there's limits to how much, you know, there's diminishing returns rather on like a 60 day meditation retreat versus, you know, just do, do a short one here and there, whatever you got to do. 
but then come back to reality, challenge yourself, push yourself into other areas. Like, and so, so I'm not a zealot in that regard, like with veganism, it's a good example. Uh, I'm not a zealot, I'm not an evangelist, but it, you know, it's very tiring and exhausting and depressing to know that those are the best values that should be institutionalized and that, you know, uh, corporations should take on, uh, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, but of course that, that, you know, we, we need the mass transformation isn't just through individuals either. It's through institutions. It's through, uh, um, collectives. Yeah. So. You, you're addressing an important, uh, uh, important issue here that, okay, yes, I'm going to save the world after my next yoga retreat mm-hmm. on, on Bob and then, Oh, I need to go on this workshop and that workshop before I, and it's like, okay, like how long are you going to spend like cleaning your room at some time? We just need to, okay, I am broken, imperfect. And, but, you know, take that leap of faith to go out there and, and change and, and change the world. Uh, you're right about something else about this, you know, that, that have also occurred to me over the years, you know, this fetishizing uh, of psychological development, especially like of the stages of development and, and people being completely obsessed about these stages and, and betterment and, and so on. And, um, you know, I was also like that 10 years ago uh, when I just discovered m- much of this stuff uh, as like, oh, you know, inner development and you can think more complex and uh, you can increase your depth and so on. Um, and I was out on the journey myself where I experienced like going from being a less complex thing to suddenly like the world expanding. Um, and um, yeah, so there was, a, of course, a very empowering uh, experience. Uh, but as I've grown older, I've come to the conclusion that we actually need, need more healing. Like those two things go hand in hand, you know, basically mm. the same like in order to need healing. But like, as you know, I, 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 I usually say like, like for every unit of development, we need two units of healing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Like often you can see that people uh, suddenly they start warring, they, they reach the next stage, metamodernism, and then fuck, I feel completely alienated and alone now. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and we also see that people are going on those 60 days retreat and they just re, uh, experience these non-dual experiences and then they come back to their everyday life and then like fuck mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and they like first psychological development can often be very uh, traumatizing yeah. and also like if you start gravitating to metamodernism can also have social implications because like suddenly you're so far away from the metamimetic a, a, a gravitational center of society that you end up in a precarious situation and don't fit into the to the labor market and the, like people don't understand what you're talking about and um, yeah so so definitely right now i think that you know it's it's okay uh, you know we all we all hurting uh, we all broken uh, and you know if we don't do anything about it, it's only getting worse worse you know the development is, is accelerating we live in this like media saturated uh, uh, reality where we are just consuming simulacra of simulacra of simulacra and um, you know the world is making us go bonkers and we need an antidote to that and we need that antidote or those ant- different thousand t- uh, different kinds of antidotes to be institutionalized um, and that's also something the only thing that we that, that you can defend ethically like you cannot defend ethically that hey uh, I would like people to become like people should develop. They should be complex thinking metamodernists like me, so that I have more people to talk uh, to talk mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. But you can defend that. Hey, people are hurting out there. Uh, they're broken, broken, and we should heal them. And then if they just remain a healthy uh, and well-functioning, happy modernist, a postmodernist, that's fine. That's all we want. Um, so um, yeah, um, a little bit more healing and maybe uh, a less focus and especially less fetishizing uh, development. I, I totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think all those points are are bang on. Um, um, yeah, it's it's like um, th- this has always been the case for me too. We don't just want metamodernism for its own sake. Like I I draw. I'll draw a comparison to some, to a, to an organizational movement, like effective altruism. You know, they're, I remember years ago, they were boasting about their growth. Like, Oh, look at our growth. We had like 500 people this year and then like 5,000. And then like, now we have 20,000 and there's so much critiques about effective altruism. There's so, you know, there's so much wrong with it. 
um, and it's maybe it's successful in its own little bubble for a while, and it it brings like minded people together. But I've always seen those types of organizations as more obstructive <laughs> to the emergence of a of of a meta modern society than as, as helping facilitate it. And so it's not quite a reactionary thing, like it's a liberal thing, but um, uh, you know, this is why I think like convergence and consensus are so important. Um, so we're eliminating redundancy. We're, we're eliminating the, that, that uh, sort of competitive struggle. Um, and it, so in many regards, like the answer does have to be the expansion of the, of the state as it were, but that's, that can be kind of a slippery slope too, because who, you know, who's in power of the state? at any given moment a lot of these things are neutral um until the the very human factor is introduced you know the the given president and even even a liberal president like obama was deeply compromised deeply pulled you know to the right and to the center such that um all of these progressive ideals we're talking about that should by now be you know sacrosanct and institutionalized they've been eroded and this is why through metamodernism, it's important to have a consciousness about eco-socialism vis-a-vis capitalism, right? So like, this, this, this is why I like talking about this with you too, is like, you can, you can say in one breath, like you won't identify with leftists or, or, or socialism. And I get why, and, and I won't either in certain circumstances, but that just on a basic conceptual level, we need to establish that broad literacy that shows how those forces relate to each other. Yeah. And, and obviously I would also say that, you know, if you are uh, a supporter of the Republican party, you know, and Donald Trump, you know, like Republican party can be, you can't be a Republican. Uh, it's, it's, it's very broad, but again, like you, you would need, I would say like a lot of explanation, like, okay, how do you make that, fit into uh, into metamodernism uh, like the, the way i see it you know in the u.s uh, today is that it, it's a systemic failure yeah and the u.s is running on a very very old design that is showing is uh, yeah it's showing its age right in in, in because like for example like in, in 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 all other countries we have this system where the person who gets the most votes uh wins the presidency or get, yeah um and you don't have that system in the U.S. Yeah. It's also interesting, like in other countries, um, you have like the opposite of voter suppression. Like uh, in some countries, they even made it like uh, illegal not to. I think it's like in Belgium or somewhere that <laughs> if you don't vote, you get a fine. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you know, like in Denmark or Sweden, you just like get your your ballot card, you know, in the post, and you know, it's it's a constant. Like I mean, oh, how do we get young people to vote? And then like you have voter suppression. Yeah. And then you have like like a, a, a system, you know, with with gerrymandering, you know, and the, like the, the whole system is just, you know, like if the U.S. Uh, would have had, you know, a European style representative system, you know, we wouldn't have had any Donald Trump. Uh, mm -hmm. The Republicans uh, would be, you know, a small party, you know, to the far right. Yeah, because most people. Uh, you know, are gravitating towards more progressive values. It's just because of the voting system that uh, the reactionaries, uh, they keep winning. Now, um, this, is, th th this, this is going to be even more pronounced in, in, in the future because we have a young gen a generation that is uh, more racially diverse than ever. And, um, you know, we have a generation of like millennial duration, also gen generation set, who's got an experience of, um, um, yeah, stressing about uh, college tuition, uh, stress, uh, student loans, um, not getting the healthcare, like, like having the dilemma, should I eat or should I get healthcare, um, people sleeping in their cars, these kind of things. And, and I think that at some point, it is just going to change because so many people are going to have that experience that the system doesn't work in their favor, that it is going to show uh, that's going to be a political earthquake, not not a revolution, um, but it's simply not sustainable. 
politically in the US and you know what the Republicans represent, you know, they are dinosaurs. I would also uh, uh, think that, you know, that, you know, the older you are, the more prone you are to voting Republican, the younger you are. And then, you know, you just need to calculate the Republicans are going to die out. It's the same with Brexit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're old, uh, you voted to leave the union. Uh, if you were young, you wanted to stay. Yeah. And um, um, I have like great hope, like in the younger generations, because younger people, they have more progressive uh, 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 ideas. And I also think that they are not, uh, maybe they are going to get like more right leaning. Yeah. as they need to pay taxes they're not mm -hmm. okay maybe they don't pay as much taxes mm -hmm. but when it comes to progressive values mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, you, you kind of keep that your life out mm -hmm. yeah? that people are not suddenly uh, going to be against free choice and think we should have guns all over the place and um, mm -hmm. um, uh, like be against evolution theory like all these like retarded reactionary uh, mm -hmm. uh, issues that are still present sadly in the US yeah, this is where it, it gets a bit bleak and hopeless for me because, you know, we, we touched on this last week when we talked, but but um, many people have said, um, you know, after the, 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 you know, one or two year kind of Jordan Peterson craze that he would die out, that he would, you know, become obscure. And, and you said, you know, you said uh, last week that you would bet that 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 trend, you know, would happen. And, and I see the opposite happening, at least right now, that in, over the past few years, his influence has continued to grow. Uh, he's become more and more relevant as a conservative leader, explicitly. And he just joined the Daily Wire, which is Ben Shapiro's news uh, platform, fake news platform, and also, like, now, movie studio, right? So they're making awful films, but they're also doing, you know, very high, high production value interviews. And, and with music and it's all cinematic, like masterclass kind of thing, right? It's all part of the brandy. And my concern is that they're, they're giving a whole generation of people, speaking of young people that they appeal to, a false confidence. And so, and then when we enter conversation or debate with those people, they have all this, they have all these logical tools and argumentative tools, and they have all this dogma and beliefs, and they also have huge numbers. At their back and so they have the confidence to to argue with leftists um i mean that stuff rarely comes into our space but but you get where i'm going with this they the the, the reactionary force in culture is still growing and and um my my meta concern is that when we use this term like people still don't know what we mean and there's all these classical liberal centrist pundits for for the Atlantic and New York times and WAPO and they're all old white men too. And they just don't mm. get it. They don't, they're part of that reactionary trend just as much as young people watching Ben Shapiro, however much they may occasionally distance themselves from it. So you, you need to, you need to zoom out. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone needs mm -hmm. to but also when it comes to time perspective, you know, we are mortal creatures and then we think in terms of like two, three, like you need to think in, in, in decades. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also that oh, you see that a lot of stuff are, are, are happening, you know, on this new reactionary, this new reactionary scene. Um, but you need to zoom out. It's also like okay, today uh, like Nazis uh, are more well organized, but their numbers are smaller. Yeah, and uh, it's also I don't be I believe that Jordan Peterson maybe is going to be a star, you know, in these circles. But um, he's just exiting the mainstream, mm -hmm. which means he's mm -hmm. not going to sit um, in like this the, the biggest Swedish Norwegian uh, talk show. Yeah, uh, we have like this. He was he was like he's not going to be invited back there. Yeah. So uh, like so many other, he's going to sit there, you know, in this like fringe category that maybe represent because that's the truth that like twenty to thirty percent of the population. Um, um, are very reactionary and we see it same in europe like in, in in election patterns that you know um, voting for these like like brexit parties anti-immigration party and so on and it's gonna mean that people are generally older and it's also what you see now is also like the, like the death spasms 
you know, of like because the old world is dying. Yeah. If you were grown up with, you know, the the the, the nation state, you know, and good clean uh, 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 Christian values, um, uh, a lot of hypocrisy also, but that's another story. Mm. Uh, and you just see that eroding, like suddenly, like that that development has mobilized people. It's not that suddenly people have gone from having like very liberal values and then now they become reactionaries it's just that they have been slumbering reactionaries yeah it's like you know mm -hmm. like it was not that people were like super uh, non-racist back in the 70s in europe uh in, in europe in most countries there just weren't a lot of color there, there were just not a lot of colored people yeah so mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't really a thing yeah but then if we look like if we zoom out, we see that um, that people over time um, and sometimes it's two step forward, one step back, you know, mm -hmm. are becoming more progressive. Uh, the only mm -hmm. thing that can stop that or revert that development is, uh, and that's what I'm afraid of now, if our material conditions, you know, are going to revert us back to some kind of Mad Max society. Exactly. Of climate war. Exactly. Uh, that, that's, no. that's where my mind was just going to go, because as we, as millennials, grow up into the future, as it were, right? We're living through all these years where, like, Terminator 2 happened, Blade Runner happened, all these, you know, future projections. Those aren't the best examples for an accurate future. Uh, and, and neither is Mad Max or things like that. But but there's a whole genre of those types of movies, um, especially the ones that are more nuanced and on that kind of cutting edge about, you know, whether it's about AI or, or whatever. These are things that can happen and are happening. Uh, Elysium is a good example because you have you have this um, this elite rich culture that lives in space on a kind of space hotel. And then you have all the poor people that live and fight on the hot desert earth. And, um, you know, I think our, our meta, meta, meta modern values and our kind of projections of the future, even if it takes a few decades, are to um, solve climate change, you know, to have a resilient, regenerative society and economy where everybody has, has um, a developmental trajectory and a, a safe, protected life. It, these seem like really exactly. obvious exactly. things, you know, that we, whether we want. <laughs> And if and just telling trans people to mm -hmm. shut up is not going to lead us there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we see in 2022, like it's always shocking to say the year that we're in and with what's happening. You know, we see these regressions on small scales, on large scales that are just are frightening and horrifying because they destabilize the, the narrow opportunity we have to address these mm -hmm. meta issues, things like climate change. But, but there's something beautiful about shit hitting the fan <laughs> namely that uh, all right you know if the forests are blaze fire and we got flooding and we got climate crisis we have uh, like harvest and you don't need to be a postmodern to believe in climate change and do something about it yeah uh if we have like fascists at our door like invading countries um you don't need you don't need to be super highly complex meta modernist or post modernist to do something about that yeah and, and that's also like you know we would hope that hey couldn't we just like in advance sit and kindly tell oh we need to do x y and z because otherwise bad things will happen but that's not how humanity works like bad things need to happen uh, and then we have chaos and chaos is a ladder uh, and through that, development will occur. Um, regressions will mm -hmm. also occur. Uh, you might have regressions here, developments uh, there. Mm -hmm. Then as a, as a matter of Darwinian logic, um, where societies don't regress, they will get a competitive uh, uh, advantage, you know, and, you know, that mimetic structure will uh, take over. Um, so I would say, you know, I'm, a, I'm an optimist when it comes to the perspective of centuries. I, mm. uh, that's no matter like, mm. like uh, i think there's a like of course we can annihilate ourselves and then the the squids uh, are going to take over and then they're going to build a civilization and hopefully they will not nuke themselves you know um, but even if we were to nuke ourselves you know like there's going to be pockets of humanity surviving somewhere and then in a thousand years or something 
we will have learned from our mistakes and we will build like it's just a matter of we will learn from our mistakes i need to uh, uh, end my my sentences um <laughs> but it is you know just like a mat it's like a dialectic necessity living that eventually uh, we will have a sustainable civilization mm. uh, that mm-hmm. solve all of the problems because if we don't like the problems are just going to be so urgent dire that you 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 can't uh, look away like it is a matter of death or uh, mm-hmm. life or death mhm there's um i have i have another window open off to the side for for youtube and i just see a video that was posted a day ago uh, it happens to be a leftist youtuber the channel is called war in hell it's a pretty good channel every time i watch it the title is why utopianism is good actually and then the thumbnail says an antidote to doomerism um mm. uh it's an hour an hour long i haven't watched it but i suspect it's you know dovetailing with what we're talking about but uh i just wanted to mention that uh in passing cuz it's interesting but a point a point i actually want to make is that like cuz your next book's on history right so like, you know, history is not written in stone, um, you know, nor should we kind of reduce it to what we think are turning points. Historically, there's always complex factors, but like for the moment we're in now, for the, for the decades we're in now, if you will, I think the Bernie type campaigns and, and uh, would-be victories are so important precisely because they provide those large-scale platforms like a green new deal right which is in the name that it's based on the new deal which was a relatively uh successful social program one that yeah. one that um ac- really accelerated the kind of social progress for the country and and i say relatively right because it wasn't perfect and it was di- it was divisive in some ways and unequal the country was still very racist then but like what i want to do in our communities if not in the broader world is build a sort of unambiguous advocacy and public support and political will for a green new deal, for example, or for modern monetary theory. And to see how the, in the big picture, these things converge into short term political actions that, that we can take. And the, the green new deal was a UN thing a decade ago, right? So it, it we're constantly held back because we're making compromises with, with the right, the right and with dysfunctional uh politics and i think in this decade there needs to be some sort of mass program that is that is that is electorally victorious and is institutionalized and then we can build off of that we cannot build anything off bootstrap pulling whether it's jordan peterson on the on the sort of far right preaching or or um inner development people integral people whatever you know, to, you know, doing that kind of thing. We, we, we need to agree that these big scale pushes are, are a good thing inherently. And they're better than the kind of Bill Gates options that, um, that are being presented. And he's a, you know, he's a nominal progressive too. <clears throat> so we'd want his support too for those kinds of things. So what's your historical take on that? Well, you don't need metamodernism for that. Um, you might need uh, highly complex people to be like, uh, uh, well, you could say like gatekeepers, you know, in the mm-hmm. system, like uh, uh, pulling levers mm-hmm. there. But I would take like the the, the the new Green Deal. Like we have it like in mm-hmm. Europe, like I, war with mm-hmm. Putin has accelerated mm-hmm. the green transition in Europe. And you don't really need metamodernists so to do that. I, I, I get what you mean. <laughs> We've seen like turn, turning mm-hmm. off the uh, turning off the gas to Europe, mm-hmm. uh, and then people who need to uh, find uh, alternative uh, sources of energy. You don't really need metamodernists there. I get what you mean. Yeah. And I I mostly agree, but I feel like I feel like people need a meta meta modern perspective, which is to say, you know, more historical and cultural literacy. I feel like we we need it to see what what went wrong. Because <laughs> I think I think you know beyond your guys's books, I think metamodernism offers very interesting perspectives on like the Cold War and the the war on terror and and alter globalization. 
Right. And I think I think um, people do need that baseline literacy, especially decision makers and, and, and voters. I think they need it to look back and see what went wrong. But I'm, I'm also trying to agree with you. This is just a semantic well, distinction. You, you, you can't shove these things down people's throats. And most mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. uh, most people can't understand. And even more people don't care. Yeah. Uh, even and, scholars, and, even scholars that this would be and, in their wheelhouse. This would be in their yeah, interest. Exactly. I've tried to share it so, with them and they're like, yeah, I'm and, too busy. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's like also a typical era out there. I can understand it. Like if, if you work like with, 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 you know, like climate change science all day and you could just be like, look guys, you know, we all going to fucking die. Mm -hmm. um, and then people are like, oh yeah, I don't know. But they, now there's football. What the fuck do you do? Mm -hmm. um, but like, um, this is also like with our project of psychological development and healing that, um, all right, what can we do? We can address the issues that people have, you know, in their personal, uh, personal lives. And then um, over time and on average, people are going to care more. Uh, um, because the thing is that there's not a lack of information out there about climate change, you know, or social issues. Like all the information is out there. Um, what we have, uh, what we don't have in abundance is attention. Uh, and uh, that attention, you know, is being hijacked externally, but also internally. Of course, like we're getting distracted by, you know, football and social media and, you know, the whole media landscape out there, which is the same. Uh, but our attention also gets uh, uh, hijacked, you know, by negative emotions, trauma, um, you know, yeah, uh, loneliness, uh, stress, anxiety, all these kind of things. And uh, where I think that, and that's again and again, uh, I hear that from leftists that, oh, you just want that uh, navel gazing stuff, you know, where people in rich countries, they should feel better in their tummy. But don't you understand the whole world world is going to hell. and We have poor people. It's just like, yeah, you're right. But people don't care. They mm -hmm. don't care about it. Mm -hmm. They don't care what you are saying about the world ending and, mm. um, and, and, and and people suffering in the third world. The only way uh, we can get that precious, precious attention of the after all very powerful people who are living um, in the Western world, in the, uh, in the industrialized first world, in the rich countries, is by addressing uh, the issues um, that people are having in their personal lives. And that's what I believe, you know, the listening society is both a goal, but also a means. Uh, because if people um, would experience higher levels of uh, personal development, you know, where they would start gravitating towards higher value means, because the thing is, if people are not at least gravitating to postmodernism, they're simply not going to care about these things. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you know if the local forest is uh, it's like burning, uh, or uh, they have like that the house is flooded. Um, but otherwise, people need to at least gravitate towards the postmodern uh, postmodern value meme. Uh, and then uh, people need to be in a psychological condition condition where they have the extra bandwidth. And um, if you're completely fucked up. Uh, feeling lonely, bad, uh, 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 bad, bad, bad self-esteem. Uh, 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 if if you feel your life is if you're trapped in your life, you have a bad relation uh, with your family, and and all these psychosocial issues, which I will still claim we are having like an energy crisis now. You know, people can't pay their heat bills and uh, inflation, but still, the biggest problems we have, you know, in the Western world are not of a material nature, they are of a psychosocial nature. And I also believe that, you know, if we were in a better psychosocial condition, if we had, you know, better relation to other people and to ourselves, and we weren't dragged down by negative emotions, stress, anxiety, low self-esteem, we would also be better even at addressing, you know, our old material shortcomings. Yeah, but so that's like the whole core of the listening society mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. let's try to address the higher emotional 
uh, needs of people in rich countries mm -hmm. and i otherwise, yeah i'm not gonna fucking care this is this is an important kind of liminal edge if you will like i live in a rich country canada um i i grew up in, in and around one of the richest cities in the world vancouver and you know you're you're not in denial though of that link between the material and the and the psychosocial even in our rich countries because vancouver is one of the most expensive cities in the world increasingly so rent is exorbitant it's absurd and and that's rent right it's like people are just burning cash they don't get to save any of it and so that whittles down the psychosocial capacity of people and it happened to me and and so yeah. there's there's no amount of self-help that is going to help address people's sort of economic no. and financial crises and so you know and so vancouver needs and, and the whole world needs um those sort of uh transformations of of the state to provide opportunities jobs health care all the things that are that are eroded under capitalism and under that competitive mindset fuck vancouver <laughs> uh, and it's the same thing in copenhagen fuck copenhagen fuck Star stockholm fuck london new york san francisco what we are seeing right now is that for, the, for the past like 30 years or something, uh, there's been like a net influx of, of, uh, into like the, uh, uh, to the big cities. Yeah. Uh, now that mega trend is turning mm -hmm. the other side. We mm -hmm. see now that there are more people leaving London mm -hmm. um, than, than moving in. And we also mm -hmm. see that in Paris, like in the, the surrounding area of Paris, like real estate prices just going up in the countryside. Mm -hmm. that right mm -hmm. now people and it was accelerated by covid i believe it's going to continue people especially uh, uh creatives activists like us who don't have a lot of money or who don't want to you know dedicate their life to uh to, to the mighty capital uh, demon out there um people are moving out you like you have moved out like clear water british columbia you know i live on an island in, in thailand you know um daniel is even talking about moving out in the countryside this is like a mega trend uh, that is going to increase because it just these big metro like it's not that great to live in a big city you know okay you have like all services but i mean you know people uh, can make a living uh, uh, online and what we see now is a trend where I, uh, people are moving out of the big cities. Uh, we will see, you know, hipsters, uh, hippies and hackers building communities, creating little eco -villi villages. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is possible. Uh, sure, no, no, it is not possible um, to live the life that I have, you know, while residing, you know, in, in the city center of London or Vancouver for that matter. Um, and I'm not going to try, I'm not even gonna bitch about it because, okay, uh, I'm out of that game. Um, yeah. And I don't think there, you know, like you're saying about working for capital, there's not really a lot of good ways to make money. Even if you're doing something um, you enjoy, like writing, like, you know, uh, th that's been my experience. You always have to compromise a little bit. Um, uh, there are some ideal jobs, sure. But, 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 uh, and, and I think capitalism by and large, when it works, you know, uh, can can produce good outcomes and 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 yeah, we lots need, of surplus. We, need to, find, we but, need to find our way out there. Yeah, but uh, most jobs we suck. Need, we, need to, we need we need to create our own jobs. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm doing, what I also see that that you are doing is that okay, how can I reduce my costs mm -hmm. you know, by living out in the countryside, you know, and uh, and you can like if mm -hmm. you if you if you reduce your rent you know mm -hmm. like food is not that you know if, if you're mm -hmm. able to cook it is it is not mm -hmm. it is not that expensive and um and, and then you need to create your own job and uh, yes um you need to spend some of the time you know on on uh, on, on other people but i think that's fair right? because I, I don't want to live in a I, it would be very very inefficient if for example we gave basic income uh, and then people, they could like sit there and write their shitty novels that yeah. no one would read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and it's also like the market out, out, out there that, all right, if, 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 if you create some writing or, 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 or some things that people enjoy, um, you will get a reward too. 
uh, to keep it. And, and the trick is, 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 to, is to find that, you know, and I'm also like working for other people, you know, providing services that I can help them with. And, and I think that's fair. I don't think it's fair that people should go to a work. Uh, they should work. Like they go to a work they don't like every day. And then, of course, you know, that's taxed. So you know, like in a country like Denmark or Sweden, like six months a year, um, you work for someone else. And, uh, and and I think, OK, that that money goes to road, roads, education, healthcare. All right. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I can't agree that it should like go to someone to write the shit, the shitty novel that no one wants to read. Yeah. And I don't like like also in Scandinavia when it comes to the arts that uh, like if you talk to people who make a living from the arts, you know they all know where to get funds from, from some you know a state a state run organization and where there's a money pot here and there and um, basically you know you have people working boring jobs. Uh, so that some people can do shitty art that no, no one wants to wants to look at. Um, yeah. So I, I think that we should try to figure out what can I provide for other people out there uh, that they want um, and then turn that into a living. It, 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 I think it, it has to be that way. But that's also, mm. you know, when, 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 when right-leaning pe people, they are defending capitalism, you know, uh, what well, doesn't they make this oh look at the market and you get that and and it's like no like the, the market is a beautiful thing you know what's rotten is how capitalism is uh, is run like with uh, you know with the banks and actually that has more to do with the state because like okay the market is like what is the market well it, it's a bunch of rules yeah what people are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do and those rules you know are, are, are you know come from uh, come from the state you know we need to think that the state uh, the state and, and, and the market, you know, they're, they're more the, the same thing, you know, and, and they're actually both, you know, uh, uh, sucking us dry. Like, just, just imagine, okay, you, you go, you go, you go, you have, you have, you, have, you create this much, much value by going to work. And um, um, yes, uh, and then like a certain amount, you only get like a certain amount of that in your paycheck. Because otherwise, people wouldn't enjoy, employ you. What too? Because it wasn't that twenty percent, like in the in, in the in the surplus value. So, um, so, so th this is the amount that you get. Uh, all right. Then you have like the state, you know, taxing you, and you have this much. But mm -hmm. then the market also taxes you. Because I would mm -hmm. say that rent. Mm -hmm. That's kind mm -hmm. of like you know, uh, rich people tax. Mm -hmm. you know, tax you pay rich people. Mm -hmm. So then you pay your rent. Yeah. Uh, and then you also have VAT on everything you buy, and mm -hmm. then you get this much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know it's it's not a question of like, like state or uh, state or market. It's both. You know we're getting sucked dry right from both of these. And um, um, what I gravitate to uh, towards the most is this like anarchistic idea of just you know uh, breaking free of both of those chains. Uh, and just be free to do whatever I want without having structures um, standing in the way or, um, or, or, or sucking me dry. Um, and uh, I would say that that is, you know, like, uh, like the social that say that, you know, like this, uh, well, communism is the end goal. Um, and I would say like, yes, the end goal is, of course, that we evolve you know, as human beings uh, to a stage of development uh, where uh, we are not caught, you know, in this material game of, 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 uh, of, of, of uh, you know, uh, acquiring material possessions mm -hmm. and where we just mm -hmm. be free, uh, where we can be unleashed uh, and not think about these things and, you know, be artists, all of us. Yeah. And, and yeah. Just playing. Yeah. Um, kind of like you know this star trek utopian uh, mm -hmm. communism exactly um, which is not going to be the end result of metamodernism or metamodernism maybe is going to pave the way and be the foundation from where such like a, a next level state of um, of society can emerge but right now we just need to take care of the most dying issues namely that uh, okay the the planet is burning up um and <laughs> mm -hmm. um and people are feeling like shit, you know. So mm -hmm. we need to figure: how can we make people 
in rich countries to not feel like shit. Uh, so they start caring about the world so that we don't burn off the planet. Yeah. Uh, and that might uh, prevent world hunger and war. And it, Exactly. Like the, the problem presents a solution sometimes. So like there's a yeah. climate crisis and then you have people complaining about a meaning crisis. Yeah. Uh, and I've, you know, I, that's not a problem for me because my way of dealing with meaning is addressing the other crisis right <laughs> like yeah, and exactly. it's not not an easy path but that's that's just existence that's existential sort of re re revelation to kind of come to terms with who you are as a finite human being on this planet to make the best of it in a in a historical context um and you know in terms of trends like post-materialism is this uh this concept from ronald Englehart. You know, and that that demonstrates that over time, because of this um, affluence in Western countries, people's values shift oh. towards oh. these things. But what's happened with that is people have reacted to it the wrong way, right? In this sense that they're seeking meaning in meaningless things, and they're 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 chasing their tail. So, um, and I one point I wanted to make, like I you you know with with developmental trajectories like you you keep making the point which i agree with in the way you're saying it like oh the united states doesn't need metamodernism yet or it's not ready for it or whatever because they they still need to achieve the ba the basics the base basic health care basic education um but i also think address systemic issues mm -hmm. with like with that like, mm -hmm. you cannot treat a constitution like a holy book mm -hmm. you know, and the whole mm -hmm. system is running on a very very outdated model mm -hmm. exactly um but i i, I think the the point i want to make from a different angle that kind of complements that is like we live in such complex and advanced times like technologically internet space exploration uh in various ways that year after year there keeps being breakthroughs break breakthroughs in ai breakthroughs in uh aviation in, in energy um they're sometimes incremental you know they're, they're not they're not as huge as they're billed as but the world is so complex right and so um you know d digital natives millennials you know that that grew up on their phones uh, or or zoomers rather they don't seem to be bothered by all that complexity and the contradictions. But I would say a lot of people still need, and this needs uh, to be a part of broad education that, Hey, you live in the 21st century. Now it, it's hard mm -hmm. for these reasons. You know, it's complicated for these reasons. Uh, I think, I think people need that kind of net narrative to help guide their development. Well, it's like, um, um, they don't care, but we know that mental health, is deteriorating we also know that digital uh, use like we're getting like digital overdoses out there it's making mm -hmm. people sick. yeah and um also when we when we have a shooter well what have they been doing they've been sitting alone in front of the internet and just getting bonkers from uh, the material that's out there a guy like that would probably um have had a much better life and not sh shooting anyone if he grew up just grew up on a farm you know back in the days yeah like we are getting poisoned we are getting fed more bullshit than we can uh, metabolize yeah and um, it has to do with our usage uh, of, uh, like, uh, of, of 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 digital media um spending eight uh, eight uh, eight hours a day you know in front of a screen uh, on your phone or uh, uh, computer or tv or, or whatnot just being fed you know simulated worlds yeah mm -hmm. like we are mm -hmm. we are losing we are losing a, a whole generation of young men uh to gaming porn and nazism mm -hmm. yeah and uh i also think that you know like shit needs no i say like shit needs to hit the fan that uh, the antidote to this you know is like to go offline switch off retreat mindfulness meditation um because that's the only way we can metabolize all this shit yeah and because because we see it in the statistics that you know the younger you are 
the the worst mental health um and um you know it's the same you know with uh, with young women you know they all think they're fat because they're watching perfect pictures you know i don't need to say we, we know these things and uh, i would say that what we're experiencing now it, it, it's kind of like you know we're in the middle of a digital revolution yeah and uh, it was the same with the industrial revolution when it happened in in, in england uh, 200 years ago that suddenly we had like this new uh, new mode of production and suddenly like like the the, the average living age just dropped in uh, in liverpool you know you had like a, a child laborers you know smoking pies pipes working in mines and in factories and and people died of like horrific um and and it's the same here that like tech, because technology is always first uh politics and ethics are laid like, i want to say like uh, economic like technology and economics are always first and then you have politics and ethics you know always later and right now we are just like getting like with full brute force like uh, 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 what like a, a completely digitalized uh, society uh, entails and only later will we de develop the count countermeasures uh, to these things um the only problem here is that you know when um, you had the industrial revolution in uh, uh, in england 200 years ago like other countries they saw what happened and they like create okay uh, when the industrial revolution spread to germany and france and the u.s that okay let's just you know make some make sure that we don't have child laborers and then we have protection <laughs> on the machine. And, you know they, they saw what happened in england mm -hmm. uh, but like with the digital revolution it's happening worldwide instantaneously yeah so we're getting fallout um all over and um uh we wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for this revolution um you know it works as there would be no metamodernism without the internet um there would be no metamodern community because yeah mostly you're just the only meta metamodernist in, in in the village mm -hmm. but on the other side um we are seeing a whole world just going bonkers like fake like just mm -hmm. technology like facebook in uh, in the wrong setting can um uh, can, can, can cause uh, a genocide we see that in Myanmar. it's the same like think about like with, when the radio came like hitler came to power uh, because of the radio uh, and if we look, if we look at uh, the printing press, you know, like um, uh, the, the whole, uh, uh, like you, you wouldn't have like Protestantism without the, the printing press, you know, like it was like tried uh, with Jan Hus uh, before Luther, it was it, it, uh, Jan Hus tried 50 years prior to that, but, you know, he, uh, the printing press didn't exist. When Luther uh, had like pamphlets printed, you know, it spread like wildfire all over Europe. Mm -hmm. And we had 150 years of religious warfare. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. The print press was necessary uh, for the scientific revolution, but we just had to go through 150 years of religious warfare. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same thing we see with the internet now. Yeah. We thought that the internet, oh, it's going to be this, you know, liberating cyberpunk uh, 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 utopia thing. But um, what we see instead is that it just works as a catalyst for hate and insanity. Yeah. And we need yeah. to find ways to address that issue. <laughs> those, those issues. And it's going to take decades. And in the meantime, you know, we're going to have a lot of collateral damage, just peeing go people going completely bonkers and getting weird ideas into their minds. Ideas that their complexity, uh, their emotions cannot handle. Yeah, that's um, that's a heavy dose of uh, reality <laughs> that that you just gave there, um, but yeah, I feel I feel our our role is to kind of, uh, you know, s surf ride those topologies to use to use a fr I don't know if that was Terrence McKenna or somebody somebody like that, but uh, you know, just to kind of hang on. Um, but you know, to return to the kind of theme, this is why I yeah, want like, people, scholars to understand at least what metamodernism says on the page, you know, like what your guys's book says, what Vermeulen and Vanden Van Acker's book 
says, um, academics just ignore it. You know, it's really a good reorientation tool that has been neglected. And so the meta problems and the meta crisis kind of, you know, trucks along, just, just rolling over history and, and, um, you know, call me naive, but I don't, I don't think it has to be that way or should be that way. And so we need to pass some sort of threshold, uh, some sort of event horizon, you know, like, like we, we use that term with our event in Kiev a few years back. Right. Um, and I think the world, the world needs to, to go through that. And I think a lot of pop culture is trying to facilitate that, uh, slowly, but surely, but, uh, but we need that. Yeah. Uh, but where we are, you know, we, we, we are, you know, I have this model, uh, I say like art is always first, you know, um, whenever we want to look at the first, um, uh, instances of a meeting, we look at the art world, you have art because like the artist is the, the, like, they don't have a language but they can just like sense something. You only need like one artist just to sense the future where are the attractors and then they can put it into form, picture, sound, whatever. And then, you know, the, the philosophers get inspired by the try to put that into words. So first you have art, then you have philosophy. Then that will spill over into technology, uh, economics. Uh, then you get politics and then you get ethics. Interesting is that politics is always before ethics. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and the good thing is like, like homosexuality was made legal long before people actually thought it was okay. Yeah. Um, and, mm -hmm. and it's again, politics mm -hmm. needs to be progressive because people are always conservative. Like if you take mm -hmm. a country like Switzerland, you know, <laughs> it's like they, they have, uh, you know, direct democracy. And then when you like, uh, until like the nineties, you ask like, should people, uh, should women have voting rights, you know? And then no, said all the men <laughs> um, mm -hmm. in, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm saying here is that what should we do? No, it's not, mm -hmm. we should not. Uh, and it's also say, uh, addressing that to you, namely that they know it's not now that we should create this move, this political movement and purge it of impure elements and, and you know, all these reactionaries away and then, no, 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 that's not where we are. Where are we right now? We're actually quite lucky. We are in the most playful phase of metamodernism, namely art. Yeah. And we need, what, what we need right now is also to stay sane. That's like one of the most important things to stay sane yeah, and then allow ourselves to play because you, you're not going to like if, if you if you take it too like we're in for the long haul. We are not talking about success in 5, 10, 15 years. You know, we are talking about decades, you know, like a meta modern society, society that we, we are probably not going to see it in our lifetime. No, we're going to be very, very old and like too senile to understand what's going on. And uh, we only have this one life. And what, how do you want to spend it, you know, um, to sit, sit there in front of a, a computer or be like really angry that things don't go your way or to address this in a playful manner. Uh, Cause what we need, like, it's also, I consider myself an artist, uh, a theory artist, not an art theorist, that's something else. Uh, but a theory artist, theory is my, um, is my artwork, uh, the, uh, the whole Metamoderna Hansi universe. And I also think that is the only one, only way that we can succeed right now. Like if you skip mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. philosophy, politics, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. not going to say, it's also like, how do we make people care? Mm -hmm. uh, by showing them a PDF with a lot of theory? <laughs> or by Formulas. Them, uh, Yes, <laughs> by showing them art. Ah, that's also what, what were we doing in Kiev? What was it? Mm -hmm. It was an art festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also, th it's also something <clears throat> that, uh, that Daniel and I are working on. We're trying to get some funds for us to do a meta modern arts festival. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and I also mm -hmm. think that, like, how do we make people care? Well, they need to feel something. And like the aesthetics, you know, for this art that we should pursue is like, like solar punk, like, because instead of that, that, that PDF that probably no one, uh, uh, very few people understand it and no one cares. Um, like, what is it that you guys want to do? And you can sit there and you can talk for hours and maybe you understand a little, but if you just Google solar punk, that's it. That's what we want, you know, 
take like a picture of solar punk you know that's where we want to go everyone can understand that mm-hmm. and, and just like the way mm-hmm. that uh, back in the 19th century that we had the world fair uh, we also have it today but it's just like showing off like cars and just it's not very it's, it's not very important today but back then it was a shop shopping window uh, for modernity you need to think that you know even like uh, 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 100 years after the industrial and french revolutions people were still mostly post horstians yeah there were like a few elites here and there that were like truly uh, modern but the world fair was kind of like showing modernity to people see okay what what is it this is what we want yeah showing the eiffel tower the crystal palace uh, all these gadgets yeah that's modernity and the same thing should be done with uh, with meta modernity uh, through arts festival yeah through a certain aesthetics i would say mm-hmm. that we should pursue like solar punk that that's mm-hmm. where we're going then we can make people care mm-hmm. yeah i want to make a distinction because i because i agree and and i want to mention my film because for me that was my way of going in the exact opposite direction of, of academia and research and scholarship but it, but going in the opposite direction with that with that thread you know taking all of that abstraction and and sociological theory and progressivism and philosophy and, and, and inner development and putting it into an a meta a meta narrative, a kind of meta fictional meta narrative, yeah, yeah. and and actually, I tried to show the film at our festival. That was the only thing I could kind of bring to the table, um, and it, it was cut short. We, I think, I forget, we had a scheduling conflict or something, and we got booted out, so so yeah. it didn't get to play out. But like, yeah, I you know, so the point I want to make though is like. The distinction is you're talking about the trend that starts with art and ends with meta ethics, and I agree. But um, but but we don't like we're not we don't have to be subject to that necessarily in the sense that we're still thinking about meta ethics. We're thinking about all those things and then putting it back into the art, so it becomes a holistic kind of reflexive <clears throat> process. So you know ultimately that's what the abstract is about. You know meta ethics and art and how do those things converge through a through a through a fitness program and a philosophy of abstraction um Mm. so but the trends when you're you're talking about the trends i think that's accurate you know we have to wait for society to catch up um and i wanted to mention like we won't we won't go down this rabbit hole but like you know because of the show community the russo brothers and they directed four marvel films i think that's meta modern art uh in that yeah. genre at least and they're bringing they're bringing that um and also you know the show i don't know if you've seen it but you know we mentioned in passing kind of luxury space communism you know star trek the next generation famously kind of gave us that aesthetic the show the orville from seth mcfarlane the creator of family guy is is so good in my opinion and it it um it's got some of the producers from the next generation so it's it's literally borrowing a lot of that that narrative and that that world and and putting it into the orville and and the show actually is not really a comedy like seth mcfarland has said that it has comedic elements that come from the characters and it it does have one-liners even though he said that it's not built on one-liners but it's a very meta modern show in my opinion just the way it, it handles social issues the way it handles the humor mm. the, the the way the, just the way the the way the stories are told um because it's a little bit long form you know it often goes over an hour um, so i just yeah just wanted to share kind of all those thoughts together yeah because what i wanted to say with this is that um you know we don't need the brand like perching the forum for right right wing people well, we need you know, trying to turn it into like a socialist movement. Yeah. What we need is Brent the artist who does movies and mm-hmm. maybe little rap because you're, you're mm-hmm. very, very creative. Uh, so that's also I think, you know, now now it's getting late here, what I wanted to, but that is that uh, just just stop it, man. You know, if, there's no need to go completely Robert Spierre on the meta modern community out there yes they're right-wing people you know there are even reactionaries out there 
and and I know it bothers your piss, uh, as we say in Denmark, but mm. you know, um, just leave it because we ain't there. Uh, it's not going to be productive. What would be productive would be to channelize that energy of yours, you know, into creative output. Uh, and, and I think it's a, that you answer something about, you know, uh, combining, you know, the academic stuff, you know, theoretical stuff with art. Yeah. Um, cause the theoretical stuff just alone is probably not going to reach that many people. Um, so that's just what I wanted to, uh, mm. wanted to say here at the end that, uh, no, um, uh, don't go the Robespierre way, man. Uh, it, 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 mm-hmm. It's not, le- it's not leading, to, leading to anything good. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, embrace your inner metamodern artist and um, yeah, mm-hmm. shock us with something else than angry outbursts in our online forum. <laughs> Thanks. I agree with that. And that's a good place to end. Uh, and I do, I do want to make more art. Honestly, the art is, I think, is more resource intensive than just sit, sitting alone and writing which is also resor- resource intensive yeah. like let's, let's let's be honest right people need to understand that it's not you know like we were joking before about some guy uh you know writing a novel that sucks this is not that yeah. we're sitting alone being very self-critical about the work that we're doing yeah. and it's very hard it's, it's to so demanding it's so much more demanding mm-hmm. than sitting online forum mm-hmm. uh, telling right-wing people that they're idiots mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but again it's just one more of these distractions that we are wasting our time yeah like these uh, uh these attention hi- hijacking mechanisms that then we end up you know arguing with strangers online and mm-hmm. it's not like the just discussions are gonna do anything you know um and then we mm-hmm. tell each other we're idiots and, and mm-hmm. then we get banned from forum and have to wait a month and uh, yeah. yeah that's what i uh, have to it, it is like making art it's fucking hard it is harder than doing academic work mm. but i believe that's what we need that's what we need to do and, and that's what we need to do in order to make ourselves and our work relevant mm. good good note to to, uh, to end on expect some art people <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I don't know when, but uh, there's a lot of good art out there that doesn't get the, the artist doesn't get uh, compensated or or uh, get the uh, respect that they they deserve. I know tons of artists personally who are just like visual artists who are incredibly talented and and still have to struggle to make ends meet. But um, yeah, I want I want more good people though to end to to join our art theory revolution or sorry theory theory art revolution uh as it were um and i think what i do in challenging people in in your forum as well as other forums i think i i have to stand behind it you know so i'll i'll agree with critiques but like i i every time i do it it's to it's to show whoever's paying attention you know Mm. um in some cases what's right or that I won't be intimidated or that, you know, uh, or, or even that I have to lose for it. Like if I need to get kicked out or fired or reprimanded, that's a risk I'm willing to take to, to kind well, of stand, you, stand my you ground. Do get, you don't do not get banned from telling people they're wrong. You get banned from telling that they're fucking idiots. Yeah. Like that's, that's a, <laughs> Um, in, in, that's a in in this case, you know, we're not we're not getting into it, but I didn't do anything worse than the person in question in terms of you know who was who was. We we are, we are not going to get flinging into insults. That. Uh, has, has your ban been lifted yet? Uh, yeah, I've checked back into the forum and I've 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 messaged the person in question to uh to to face me over Zoom. The rap, the rap battle. What what about the rap battle? The rap battle, or maybe maybe like like, like a bare knuckle fight, or <clears throat> um, <laughs> well, I, you know, the the rap battles didn't get the didn't get the recognition that they deserved. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't really get through to the to the targets. <laughs> they, no, they, they 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 made a few they, people they made, snicker made, behind made, closed they made, doors. They made, they made you infamous out there, so mm. yeah, well, mm-hmm. well done. Yeah, uh, I think some people want one that I don't know if um. 
if they're so deserving of my effort, but, but, uh, but the point is taken to focus more on art. And that is, you know, I spend a lot of time these days off the computer in the real world, getting my hands dirty. And also when I'm on the computer, I'm trying to produce content and produce more art than written articles and theory. So, so that's what we have to look forward to. Thank you for, for joining the program, Emil. It's been, been a good show. <clears throat> and you know to be continued we'll, we'll we'll see what happens next it's been a pleasure take care thanks bye bye see ya oh hey what's up you are still here hey how's it going check it out look we need you to join behind the scenes this is a secret society basically i'm not gonna lie here's a here's a little bit more detail here's some uh here's some cuts that uh i thought i'd put at the end and just a quick note on the patrons, the list below has been updated. It's, uh, it reflects the uh, current support. We have just under 30 patrons, and I've dreamed for a long time of getting to 100 as a first kind of threshold to make this think tank operational, so to speak. So, <clears throat> you know, ultimately it's up to me. It's on my shoulders to uh, put out content that people want and push that out there. But if you are a patron or want to become one, the uh, the barrier of entry is only a dollar. There's a, most of the patrons are at the dollar level, and that's perfectly fine. I'm going for volume. It's not about the money, but it's about what we can spend and produce ultimately. But, um, you know, get on board. Tell me what you want. Tell me what kind of content you want. Tell me basically as a patron, you can help shape and sculpt the output that we do as a as a think tank um it's pretty much been exclusively me and my prerogatives over the past five years of doing this and that's resulted in uh, numerous uh, publications and high level connections and me basically being a uh, established contributor to this uh weird discourse of metamodernism but if we want to actually you know actualize it you know we're gonna have to step it up we got a lot of potential here there's a lot of different tools basically i just want my time in front of the computer accounted for and compensated that's all you know no big deal i just want to participate in the world and you know be be uh supplemented and sustained to do so because i think i'm a good important contributor yeah and if if you're a reactionary and you want to take me on yeah who the fuck are you what are you doing with your life we're, we're gonna break it down it's game on buddy okay yeah check it out man and holy shit do we ever have a backlog of content we have a huge backlog of content in fact another thing an important thing that i forgot to mention i really need to mention now I'm running out of hard drive space. I'm constantly running out of hard drive space. My most recent purchase that is being shipped, won't be here till around Christmas, is a new hard drive. 